Okay, today I'm going to give you 10 quick tips on how to speed up your workflow in Rive. Okay, this is my first Rive tip for you to speed up your workflow. So, so we've got this ellipse here with this nice specular material on it. So it's got a it's got a lot of different fills on it. It's got a fill, it's got a rim light, it's got a sort of matte cap feel, and then it's got a specular highlight here. And now I've got another sphere and I want to copy that over, but I'm lazy. I don't want to redo this whole thing again. So all I can do is I can just click on this original sphere, hold down, down Control Alt and C, copy style, Control Alt V, paste style. There you go. And you can even do it on, let's have a re rectangle and we can do Control Alt V, do it on the rectangle as well. So that's a really a handy feature on Rive where you copy the whole style and everything linked to it and then just put it on a new object. As easy as that. Okay, tip number two. I've got this nice bouncing ball and I uh, want to, what I want to do is I want to copy, I've got this easing on, on, the, on, on the position, but I want to copy it over to the to the scale as well so all i can do is i go to the first keyframe so i want to copy these this keyframe parameter over to this one so we get the same type of easing so what i can do here is i just select the first one go to the interpolation there just hover over there press ctrl alt c and then go to these ones here to the scale hover over them ctrl alt v and then it pastes that for us pretty cool and then we can go to the middle and select that one Control alt c copy that one and then go over to this one here or to the this one here and then Control alt v and then now we've got a really cool realistic bouncing ball so it's really powerful to copy your easings it's almost like ease copy in after effects so very easy, all you do is you select the, the, the keyframe of the easing you want to copy, hover over that, don't press anything, just hover over that, press Control alt c and then go to the one that you want to affect, and then Control alt v So that's tip number two. Tip number three, we've got this cool dancing bear. Everything is nice, the client's happy and everything. All they want to do is they want to change the color. They want a blue bear. Basically, want to smurfify the bear. Is that a word? I don't know, it is now. So, how do we do that easily? Select the bear, the group, the bear group, and then go down here where it says selected colors. And now we can just play with all of these selected colors. So, we can choose the base color, make it blue, maybe like that, copy that color. And go to the next one, paste the color, and it updates all of the colors of the bear, just like that. And then go to the last one, and just like that, we've got a blue bear. And maybe let's make his stomach blue as well, or let's make his stomach blue like that. So just like that, now we've got a blue bear. Awesome stuff. Okay, tip number four. I've got this leg here. It's basically a very simple path. It's only got two points and I want to bind this to a bone so I can have a nice leg, but it's a bit boring. I want to add some more interest to it. So all I can do is I can go to the stroke, add a new stroke, and then maybe just put a dash on it and already we have something more interesting and the cool thing of this is if I add a bone to it and I manipulate it this is going to follow the original bone layer as well so I don't have to animate or bind lots of different shapes I can just make one nice stroke and then bind everything to that and that's pretty cool Tip number five, how to use vertices. Rive's got some really cool vertices and I'm going to show you quickly how that works. So basically, 
let's quickly recreate this face. All I'm going to do is I'm going to press the pen tool, do something like this, something like this, something like this, and then maybe just bring it down and then say close path. And then all I do now, so I select it, make it white, give it a stroke that's black, and now I press enter twice to edit it, and now this is really a cool trick. I can take the mirrored handle, handle and I can just sort of bring it into shape like that and create a nice round shape. And then here, at the top here, what I can also do, I can just increase the corners. And then maybe here as well, increase the corners to create a very nice fluid shape very quickly. And that is the power of vertices. Tip number six, say I want to create this hair and I'm going to start with an ellipse, make it black and then now if I copy this ellipse it's going to create new groups, new ellipses and it's going to be a bit messy. So all I can do is I can go into the ellipse, go into the path, duplicate it there and then just create my hair like this. Just quickly create something. You can just manipulate them. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. You can do whatever you want. And now they all live inside one ellipse group. That's the power of it. And then the other power of it is if I want to change the color, everything is linked together. So I can just change the color once. And then I can easily create complicated shapes very quickly. I can even take my pen tool and add something inside there with the pen tool as well. I can even do this. I can even take, even take this shape here, go down, copy that path, and then put this shape in there as well. So I copied that path and now it's all part of the same shape. And that's pretty cool. Tip number seven, the power of the elastic interpolation animation tool. So we've got this cat here. Just put a keyframe on scale. Go forward 10 frames, make it 90%. Come over to 20, overshoot it to maybe 115 and then settle it back on 100 at the end. And this is what we've got. Very, very boring. So let's make this pop. First thing to do, take the first keyframe, just give it cubic interpolation and bring the handle maybe up a bit. And then the trick here is you go to the one where you overshot and then you put this elastic button on. This is really cool. And then just increase your amplitude and decrease the period until you get something that looks like this. And let's see what you've got there. This is looking so cool. So always on your frame where you overshoot, you put this elastic and it should be quite a long Long, um, there should be quite a long period between the elastic and the last keyframe because if it's too little, it's, it's not going to look good. So, if it's like that, it's, it should have time to do its a nice elastic magic. So, maybe over 40 frames. See, that's quickly how you can create a really cool animation using the elastic tool. Tip number eight importing stuff from Illustrator or from Figma. So if you're After Effects user, you know that if you want to import something from Illustrator or Figma, you need a plugin called Overlord, which is going to set you back 75 bucks. Well, how do you import stuff from Figma or Illustrator 
in Derive? Well, I'm going to show you. All you do is you select everything that you want, press Control C, go back, Derive, press Control V, and then it will say uploading SVG from clipboard. Then you go to assets and you just wait a second and then you drag it onto your artboard. And that's that simple. No third party plugins, no fuss, no mess. That is as simple as that. That's one of the coolest things of Rive. Tip number nine, the power of the graph editor. I've got this animation here and everything's looking cool except that this ball is going out of the frame. So you would think that the, but we can fix it by just bringing the Y down here and then also do it on the other, other side. But there's a simple, simpler way to do that. Go into your graph editor, select Y position and then select these two keyframes. Make sure that you shift select both of them and then just drag it up like so. And then maybe this one, we can take this one a bit down. And there, quickly as that, we have fixed the problem. There's a lot you can do with the graph editor. Tip number 10, the power of fills. We can create some amazing fills very simply with Rive, all procedurally. Let's say, for example, let's want to make a, we want to make a red metallic fill here. So this is just our base shape. Then I'm going to add a new fill and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make this one just make sure that it's white and that the alpha is 100 percent and then this one is black then I'm just going to bring this sort of up like this maybe crunch the values a bit and then maybe bring in another one just click on it to bring in another one something like that and then all we do now is we go here where it says inherit we make it soft light and then now we add another fill we make this one radial. This is going to be our sort of specular highlight. And I'm going to make this one white. And then this one, I'm going to just maybe leave it like that. So it's transparent. Maybe crush the values a bit. Make it even smaller. And then now we can go here and we can say color dodge. And we get this sort of effect. And then for the last, and we can maybe blend this one in a bit, maybe make it a bit less, maybe 50. And then for the last one, we can just put in another fill, make this one solid, make it white. And then now all I can do is I'm just going to go here, add feathering, where it says outer, I make it inner. And then I can maybe just play a bit with the amount. And see very quickly, we've got like a nice specular metal effect. If I want to change the color, all I do is I go to the base and update it there and I can change the color there. And that's how you can very quickly make quite an advanced full effect and drive. Um, Yes, obviously I can play still a bit with the specular here. You know, you can crunch the values, make them smaller or make them bigger. But basically this is a procedural material. And then as we saw in one of the previous tips, if I want to bring it over, I can just control alt C and then control alt V. And then there it's there as well. So that's basically in a nutshell, some quick 10 tips on how to improve your workflow in Rive. Please like and subscribe this video and there's some amazing stuff on the horizon, I promise you.